Cool. Hope you enjoyed the first part of that presentation. Now, the first thing I want to just talk about is the Cert 3 in business just generally. Um, Cert 3 really is about um, fitting into an, an, an office environment and doing administrative roles and those sorts of things. It's also about, uh, it's really a non-specific qualification in a sense because it doesn't actually, um, you know, if we talk about if you're working in the hospitality sector, that's a specific role and so on. This is a much broader um, qualification that allows you to actually work in a, a range of different businesses because all businesses require administration, all businesses require, um, um, if you like, back of house support. There's always going to be things like um, writing emails or letters, formal letter writing, all those sorts of things, all goes out to to the um, the public or the, the, the clients of the business. So in the sense, this is a, a qualification that fits all businesses and all areas of, of the economy and all different sorts of careers and, uh, and trades and, and so forth. So if you think about it that way, rather than think about it as it tying you down to a specific industry, this is actually about all industries. So bear that in mind. Now, the qualification itself, it's actually got 13 units in it. Now, what we do is we are able to divide that qualification up to allow you to specialise to a degree. Now, in the first instance, you've got the six core units that everybody does. And then after that, you specialise into um, your, if you're the specialist area. So one of those areas is customer engagement. So of course, you know, that works in every business again. If you're dealing with customers in a, um, you know, a welding workshop, you're still dealing with customers. Whether you're working in a retail environment, selling selling your footwear, or if you're working in hospitality, all of those um, skills are used in the same way. Now, the second way that we actually um, allow you to specialize in is in the administration. Now again, admin, that follows with a um, specific set of skills, it will deal with, um, if you like, uh, more, again, more back of house sorts of things, less customer focused, more internally client focused. So you'd be doing maybe accounts, those sorts of things. So we'll have a look at some of the units now in a bit more detail. Okay, now these are the core units. Now, as you can see, these things are every workplace does, whether it be communication, whether it's some um, WHS, whether it's um, using inclusive work practices, which of course is you know, what we'd encourage in all of Australian workplaces. Sustainability, it's a big issue, making sure that what we do is something we can continue to do in the future and it's not actually harming the environment. Personal wellbeing, key issue again, is making sure that all of the um, staff are actually getting through the day without having any uh, adverse effects on their lives. And then of course, working together. So all units and, uh, are relevant to all all uh, qualifications and all businesses and so on in this, in this instance. Okay, now this is the customer engagement one. And as you can see, it starts to focus much more on front facing and actually being with the customer. Um, Software, of course, we all use electronic presentations. More and more businesses are expected to provide dynamic information, not just you know, a, a paper presentation. You may well be asked to produce dynamic presentations, which which you send out to clients. Um, the third one of those organised personal work priorities, again, is about you actually being able to organise your day. Service to customers, straightforward. Customer complaints, straightforward. And again, this marketing promotional activities, again, have, may be linked to your electronic presentations. And then advise on products and services. Again, that's where you give the information about your product to the client. So, as you can see, very much a focus on, on outfacing to the client. And, uh, and being very visible, um, visible face of, your, of the business really. All right, and here's the administration specialization. Now again, as I mentioned earlier, you may remember that this is about more back of house, more responsibility for you know, the day-to-day -day running of say the, the, um, the paperwork side of the business, you know, the compliance side of the business. Um, financial side of the business, making sure everyone's getting paid and and, and of course the, the clients are, are, are paying. Um, so you can see spreadsheets, business documents, personal work priorities again is about your personal organisation, finance, financial records, payroll and schedules. So again, more supportive of the, the back end of, of a business. 
And um, as I'd said previously, you'll understand that all businesses have this aspect. There's a, a more customer focused and outward facing part of the business, and then there's a more inward facing part of the business. And that's really what the administration specialization does. All right, now getting into the course. Now, as it says here, there's no essential requirements for the course, but it's really important to, to bear in mind that you need to be honest about where you are right now. Don't, don't pretend about your skills, don't pretend about what you already know, and don't enroll in a Cert 3 because I want to enroll in a Cert 3. Enroll in it because it's actually going to feed your need now. And indeed, any training that you do now is something you're going to be using for years. So you want to get the most out of it. So that means make sure that you're in the right course. Now, as as some of the, um, the ways to get into the course, you can already have done a, a Cert 2, for example. But um, there are that is not a, a, an absolute prerequisite, but it is it, it is useful. Okay, now this one is a, a really important thing, literacy and numeracy skills review. When I was saying about being honest, you're able to do this, uh, the, um, the basic key skills builder, and that's actually looking at testing yourself and actually being honest about what you can actually do right now. Don't allow somebody else to do the test for you, do it for yourself and make sure that you're able to get a, a real sense of where you stand right now, because the, the it's important to realise that we're not doing this because we're trying to punish you or to exclude people from getting into the course. What it's about is making sure that you're doing a course that fits your skill set now, and and it's our well, our main goal really is that you actually succeed. We want you to get the best out of this. So as a result, we are trying to make sure that you're in the right course at the right level. So that's what that's there for. OK, delivery information. As you can see, there's really two ways of doing this. We've got um, the face to face element, but that's just in in the Campbell Street in Hobart. And there's the timetable there. So you can please read that one for yourself if you're in Hobart. Now, statewide online. Now, again, this is this is where everybody can do it. Um, it's done. It's done not face to face. Sorry, it's done online, um, and over the two semesters. Now, it's quite important to realise that you have to self-pace with this. Um, there's going to be lots of opportunities to interact with your teachers, with other students, and so on. But it's a really key element here is making sure that you do it, do regular work, and not not let it get get uh, get on top of you. Actually, just stay up with it. Right, and always, if you, you feel like you're you're sinking or you're not keeping up or any of those things, don't suffer alone. Give us a call, send us an email, you know, make contact because we're here to help, and that's what that's what we want to do. As I said previously, you know, we want you to succeed, so call out, don't be alone. Okay, now this slide follows on from the previous one. Now. It's going to be really critical that you understand that you need to interact with the teacher. All right, now do that and do that regularly. Always ask questions. There's no such thing as a, as a silly question. And 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 also with your fellow students. Now, for some of this assessment, you're actually going to have to do that. So you can't just sit on your own and, and do this on your own. You have to be working with others because that also reflects the nature of the business world. No one and it works on their own unless you're a business of one person. Otherwise, you work with others. And it's critical to understand that just because you're online, if you're studying this online, it doesn't mean that you can avoid talking to people. That's it's critical to understand that. Don't don't be under under any illusion that you can do this without talking to other students. OK, so time wise, 10 to 15 hours a week. All right. So and you have to do that because you won't manage to get through all the work otherwise all right and as i said there's the uh, information about due dates will always be provided as we go along okay course requirements now these are some basic sorts of things you know you're going to need a windows based computer you're going to need microsoft office which you can actually download for free from us once you once you're enrolled internet collection connection um you've got to be able to download documents um and just to 
make a comment about that. Don't try and do this on a tablet or on a mobile phone because you're not going to be able to do it either efficiently or you're not going to be able to do it effectively. So please bear that in mind. You really do need a laptop or a desktop computer to do this. OK, course fees. Now you can see the subsidised fees, 976, and the concession is 325. Now, again, there are other um, options for doing the, doing this course, and there are there's more information there on the actual TASTAFE website. But that's just the broad cost. And if you have any other questions, do make contact with TAFE and just double check those things. OK, now one of the things about assessment, which I've already mentioned, is that you're going to have to be talking with your students, uh, with your fellow students and with your teacher. Now, what TASTAFE does in this course, it's, it's called an applied qualification, which means you have to demonstrate practically that you can actually do the things that are assessed in in the different units. So that might mean a meeting. Now, I mentioned before about students having to um, talk with one another. So, for example, you might have a WHS committee meeting where you actually have to contact your fellow students, arrange who's talking, what they're bringing to the meeting, and who's going to chair the meeting, and so on. And that stuff can't be done on your own. So that's why it's really critical to bear in mind that you actually um, interact and that you will be interacting and you have to interact. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can actually use your own workplace if you still have, if you are in a workplace now and you want to use evidence from the workplace, absolutely. And we'd actually, we welcome that. That's a terrific, terrific uh, way to do the course. But you need to bear in mind that in that situation, you're going to have to provide us with the evidence. You can't just tell us that you did it. So you'll have to do video things. You'll have to demonstrate that you've actually um, completed those things against the assessment requirements that we're looking for. So again, more details of that once you've enrolled and you want to talk to your teacher, and we can certainly um, customise things for you in, in that regard. OK, applying. So from next Monday, from the 30th of May, go to the website and follow the uh, the process. So have a look at have a look at the website. You're, you're best off just going to the website and working your way through it. OK, now again, I mentioned before that you can always talk to your teacher and look for, look for um, support directly from from them, but also we have specialised support. So you've got um, student counsellors, a disability liaison officer, Aboriginal support officers and so on. So if you've got any questions, and you want some additional support, you can go through us or you can actually contact um, TAFE directly. As you can see, there's a 1300 number there. All right, now that's the end of uh, the actual formal part of this process. Now we get to answer some questions. So ask away. So far, Stephen, we haven't had any questions. Oh, so dear. I think well, that that means that we've covered everything, but we oh, might just so. wait a couple of minutes in case yeah. people are shy and would now like to ask a question now that they've heard the whole presentation. I'll spiel. And remember, you can be anonymous here. There's no there's no pressure to name yourself up. If you've just got a question, um, go for it. The, the other issue to bear in mind is if you have something which is really specific that just pertains to yourself, then feel free to make direct contact with TAFE. You can, uh, or one of one of the teachers, or or um, whichever um, campus that you're near. You can even come in and visit. So, yeah. So don't uh, don't be shy. So there is now a question for you. I'm currently awesome. working as a full time chef and my usual working hours are seven till three. How would that work for online classes? OK, with in terms of online, because a lot of the material you can work through in a self paced manner, the when it comes to the specifics of organising, say working with another other students or things like that, 
Now, you can do that, but given that you're in a workplace, you may actually be able to organise a lot of this material that way. Um, and it's going to depend a little bit on the questions we're talking about and which stream you, you're, you're looking at. But yeah, certainly that would be one to negotiate directly with the, the teachers, so how to capture the evidence. So I hope that answers it. There's another question. How long does semester one go for? Um, if you're aware of the school terms, it's basically the first two terms. So the, the semester one will finish up in, I think, just before, just a very, very late um, June. So it's, it's, that, that's, it, it's the way to think about it is really around the school terms, and that's about the same duration. And we have one, will there be a Cert 2 in business offered soon? I'm just about to put a link up for mm. those people to go to have a look at where you can find other courses. But I can answer that there isn't a certificate to in business anymore and it's called certificate to in work skills. And we are offering that uh, in another area. So if you use the link I put up and search for certificate to in work skills, that will answer that question for you. Fantastic, Jackie. Thank you. I've got one more new one. OK. I'll publish that so that you can answer that while I'm just looking at that last question about Cert 2, if that's mm -hmm. OK, Stephen. Mm. Will students that have not completed their Cert, their Business Cert 2 course, find the Cert 3 difficult? Uh, well, if you didn't complete the Cert 2 course because you found the Cert 2 difficult or challenging, then yes, the Cert 3 will be more difficult. Um, but if there are other um, circumstances that prevented you doing that, then again, that's a, a case by case question, I think. Um, but yeah, if you did find the Cert 2 difficult, then the Cert 3 will definitely be more difficult. Yes, I agree with that. There are a couple of units that come from the Cert 2 into the Cert mm. 3. So if you've got the Tech 201 and the Sustainability Unit, then that mm. will come forward. But mm. if you found Cert 2 difficult, then you'd be best to go back and finish the new course, Certificate 2 in Work Skills. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Good advice. Uh, one more. OK, this is another one for you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Are we able to communicate with our teachers and peers via online video groups? Um, you're right, certainly able to use a, a variety of, of technologies. It sort of depends on what you're talking about. If you're setting up your own group, you might set up a, a group through Zoom. Um, but again, if you're trying to um, communicate directly with us, we certainly have go through Canvas and you are able to, to do those sorts of things through Canvas. Again, it depends on what you're attempting to do. For example, if you're doing a, um, say you're doing a WHS committee meeting and you, 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 someone has a Zoom account and you want to record it and then upload it to us, that's fine. So yes, the simple answer is yes. <laughs> Another question, as I have no experience in admin, would you advise to do the Certificate 2 first? Well, the Certificate 2 certainly focuses on general work skills, and that's always worth doing if you're if you're coming at um, the study cold, if you haven't studied for a while. Um, and, and also, it's also a good thing to do just for your self-confidence too. If you're not feeling very confident, jumping in and doing the Cert 2 where you can get some really fundamental skills, then it, it gives you a real, a, a good sort of trampoline liftoff point to go into the Cert 3. So again, depending on your circumstances, doing Cert 2 is, is certainly very worthwhile. Um, but again, if you want to have a, a conversation about that directly, feel free to contact us. And the last one, are there only online classes or campus classes? Well, I'm not yes, quite it's, sure what Yeah, that... well, it, in Hobart, there's a face-to-face -face, uh, full-time course, which uh, which runs for one semester. That's correct, isn't it, Jackie, for second semester as well? Yes. 
So that's one full time course in Hobart. Then there's the online course, which is actually part time and it runs over two semesters. And that's how you access. So that they're the two options. There is no face to face course in any other place in the state other than Hobart. Um, but bearing bear in mind that that is also a full time course, so you only have six months to complete the cert three. So everything else is is over two semesters. So you'll finish if you start in second semester this this year, you'll finish this cert three at the end of um, first semester next year. And the next one's a segue <coughs> to the next question. Are there any face to face sessions or assistance available from the Allenvale campus? Well, the way that will work is that again, it, it's, it'll depend a little bit on the cohort of students. There's always assistance. So you, if you if you need assistance, you can't you can certainly come in and, and meet with your teachers. There will be some uh, workshop opportunities, but it's going to depend a little bit on the cohort of students that we have. Um, but there's always the opportunity to come in and see a teacher. So if you want um, assistance, then make an appointment, come in and see us. Um, but in terms of formal classes, there, there won't be. The only time you'll have um, a, if you like, a formal class or a workshop where there might be uh, the need to have a, um, a meeting. We might have, again, where you, you're required as part of the, the, um, the unit that you're doing to actually interact with people and you feel that you can't do that online. But again, that's going to be something you're going to have to organise too. So if there's, if there's just you and you want to do it face to face, if you don't have anyone to work face to face with, um, it can't happen. So again, that would be a negotiation point. You might want to approach your fellow students and say, who wants to do this as a as a workshop? Um, then that's probably the best way to think about it. So yeah, it's a little bit dependent on cohort. So just just um, ask, ask questions. If once you've enrolled, actually just make some, make some contact and then, then we can uh, negotiate it from there. So we try to be as flexible as we can. As I know this might sound like it's a, a roundabout answer, but this way at least we try and meet the students needs and where you are rather than impose something which is absolute and concrete. You will be providing workshops online though, Stephen? Oh, certainly. Yeah, well, there's, there's, there's a weekly workshop for that, that you'll be able to talk to your teachers. Yeah, so that's it. That's every week. And, and although it doesn't sound face to face, it's a workshop where the teacher is available once a week mm. face to face online so you'll see them you'll interact with them and other students that come in so Absolutely. you might not come into the campus but you're logging in each week and making uh, contact and you can see the teacher and talk directly to them that's correct yep that'll be awesome So what is an example of what is involved in a workshop class? Uh, well, if that's if it's online, I'll just I'll talk to that one first. If you're doing a workshop, what we'll be doing is you'll get um, a recorded video of a, like it, it, like general assessment advice, if you like. That'll be a separate thing. So you'll be able to view that beforehand. But then when we actually do the workshops, it'll actually be an opportunity to interact around the assessment. And we might actually talk about some specific things related to you know the unit. So we might want to talk today about say customer service and you know what you deal with when you're you've got a customer in front of you who is uh, you know who stinks. How do you approach that? You know how do you approach you know people in an unpleasant situation in a customer service environment? So you might discuss those sorts of things that are specific to the unit. Um, but it's also an opportunity for students to ask direct questions and say, well, I'm doing this and how does this work as a piece of evidence to prove, you know, or against the um, the task requirements? So yeah, that's the sort of thing we'll be able to do in class, in the face-to-face -face class. Um, that's where in Hobart you'll be able to actually talk directly to the teacher and work directly with your fellow students. That's the end of the question, Stephen. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. So thanks very much everybody for turning up and asking your questions and um, again if there's anything you need to ask about please feel free to get in contact with us and you can see the the, um, the email address there on the screen that's the business.statewide as tastafe.tas.edu.au so yeah send your questions in thank you very much
Thanks, Jackie, very much. Thanks, David. Bye, everyone.